Hey everyone, this is my Revo Point mini review. I'm going to be using it to scan the center dash console. The end goal is to create a gauge pod cluster that's going to fit into that cavity up on the top right there. I feel like most of the reviews do something very similar and either scan small figurines or stick to the stock model that they include. Here I want to do something different and see if it's doable. I'll show you my general workflow with this scanner, but I'll also be trying to address the issues that a lot of the other reviews don't highlight or show you at all. So here I am getting the part ready to scan. I'm just using some generic foot spray from CVS to cover it all. Generally you want to cover as much as you can and whatever you're going to be scanning, try to get that and the surrounding areas covered in the powder. If you're worried about damaging the part with this spray, it's just foot powder so you can just take a wet rag and wipe it right off. It's a really good alternative and it smells pretty good surprisingly. Okay, so here are the parts pretty much ready to get scanned, so let's bring it over and start scanning it. So these next couple of clips are sped up and it's just me trying to scan the part. Here I am setting it all up, getting it ready to scan. In this clip you'll see that as soon as I'm tracking the data and it's lining it all up, once it loses track and it tries going back on track, it starts collecting garbage and just completely goes off track. So here it is. and. Yeah, you can see that it just completely went off track and tries to realign itself. So this is my second attempt. You can see that the background board was flipped over to the wooden side. I thought this would help and you'll see right now that it kind of did help a bit. But we ran into the same issue where it lost tracking and <laughs> you're just going to see that it goes off and starts merging data all over the place. So here I had to restart. So as you're watching this or skipping along, you'll see that the software did lose tracking a lot of times. This kind of just depended on when it wanted to work and when it didn't. So you kind of had a hope that it would give you good results and something to work with. So right around here we got to about the halfway mark with this scan. It wasn't until we reached the other side that we start having issues with the rest of the scan. So right about here is when I get to that lower portion. That specific portion is where the scanner was having issues. So you'll see right now that it would get to it and when you start to see the computer lag and collecting data, that's a good indication that you're going to lose tracking and it's going to be attempting to realign itself. Once you do lose tracking, you might as well restart because you get this infinite tornado of data that just stacks onto itself and makes itself completely useless. So for this scan, I ended up turning the lights off. I thought that it would get better results and surprisingly it actually did help a bit. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I kept having issues scanning that lower portion of the dash. Once I got to that lower portion again, you'll see that it ended up losing tracking and we got that little tornado of data to happen again. It's disappointing because all along on this scan, I was having no issues at all and no extra artifacts that would have been hard to take out. Here we saw that the part did miss track and it did miss a line, but it was able to recover and go back on track. This is the part where we start getting into that lower portion. Here we see it scanning the data and it's trying to realign. And I tried going a little further, but here we saw that tornado of data just starting to appear out of nowhere. So here I am with the lights back on. On this scan, I ended up turning on the auto setting for the lighting. This actually helped a little bit better and it was capturing data easier. But this is also where I realized that the issue isn't exactly with the hardware itself. The scanner actually does a really good job at capturing detail and dimension. The issue is with the software that you have to use. So it makes sense that you have to use RevoPoint software, but it's pretty bad at what it does and realigning objects and tracking data isn't its highest point. For example, here you can see that I lost tracking and it's trying to realign itself, but it ends up just stacking data on top of itself and that becomes very hard to fix later on. So you're kind of forced to just restart and you can see right there that I did just end up restarting. On this scan, I ended up starting in the middle. I'm a little stupid and had just realized that since it's a symmetrical part, I could have just scanned half of it and not had to worry about capturing the other half. Here I am scanning along. I was worried that that lower portion was going to be giving issues again and that it was going to lose tracking. I was kind of just going back and forth to make sure that the scanner was still on track. The data looked like if it was misaligned, but it wasn't any major issues or parts that I had to worry about. So there I kept going back and forth just to make sure that data would realign itself and that stuff was still lined up. Here's about the part where I start getting to that lower half. 
I made sure to slow down and let the data collect slowly. This is where you can see that the computer starts lagging and it tried aligning itself. So I just kept going back and forth trying to edge its way into the part where it straightens out. So right there everything was lined up and it looked pretty good so I just kept going back and forth making sure that stuff was still lined up. So right about here is where I decided to call it. Since I only needed half of the dash, this was enough to work with and I could just use this data. Just by looking at it you could see that it got a good amount of detail and depth and that's what I really need when doing this project. This is what it looked like without any cleaning. I'm just going to fast forward the point fusing and show you what it looks like afterwards. So here it's done and you can see that the data cleaned up a bit. So you can see that it smoothened out a lot more and it looks a lot closer to the part that we scanned. We're almost ready to take this into Fusion 360. All we have to do is take this into RevoScan. So here I am in RevoScan. I'm just going to clean it up and get rid of any artifacts that will get in the way later on when trying to work with this. Here it is with all the point clouds fused. The model looks way smoother and it's a lot cleaner. So I think it should be pretty easy to work with this in Fusion. A helpful tip that I read was bringing this into InstaMesh. So I don't know exactly what InstaMesh does, but it kind of helps when bringing things into Fusion 360. So I'm just going to load the model up real quick and go through what I do. So here's the model. You can see that it's all fused together and it looks nice and smooth. But in order to bring this into Fusion 360, doing this right away would make your computer lag a lot and it wouldn't be able to handle all the polygons. So here I'm just going to click solve and you can see that it's going to create a grid like pattern. And so if you want, you could just comb through it and fix the grid to your liking. So now that we're in Fusion, I'm just going to import the model and quickly orientate it into the position that I want. In order to get the best dimensions when making your sketch, you have to make sure that the face you're going to trace over is flat with the axis. So now that I have the model where I want, I'm going to make a sketch and quickly trace the outline of it. For the most part, I'm just going to be using the spline tool. You just have to do your best and try to stick as close as possible to the edge. Here we have the sketch all done. We could just extrude it a couple millimeters and now it's ready to throw onto the 3D printer and see how close we got to the dimensions. So here I'm going to show you the final test print. It was printed in some generic PLA and I'm just going to lay it on top of the original part and try to line it all up. Let me try to pick up the camera and show you how it looks. So here you can see that it's pretty much all lined up, everything looks pretty good, and the holes for the most part line up. Here if we come in a little closer we can see that all the edges do line up. Overall the scanner gave us some great results. Take away any of the issues we had and it gave us some really good data to work with. This tracker does a really good job at capturing detail. The issue with this isn't exactly the hardware, it's the software. So as you saw earlier in the video. I lost tracking a lot of times and I was forced to restart the whole project. This happens very often and you end up with a lot of garbage data in your scan. Personally I wouldn't recommend the scanner to many people because of the software, but if it's the best that you could get, it's better than nothing and it still gets the job done. Hopefully this review helped you out. I tried addressing some issues that most other videos skip out on. 
I also tried something different than your basic figurines or the stock model that they include. Thanks for watching and leave any questions or comments below.